Welcome to Detroit. Man, I love this city. But I represent that east side, the 48205, the red zone, one of the most notorious zip codes in the United States of America. I'm Champ Town, and this is the itis, where celebrities and legends of the hood eat good, drink good, and talk shit. We rolling, we rolling, we rolling. What's going down? What the hell is good in your hood? You know what it is. This is the itis. What? We got the chef of the itis, my lovely wife, Keisha. Right here is none other than my man, Fairport Tough. And over here is the living, the legend. I call him the cool herd of Detroit hip hop because it all starts in the basement from me to Esham to Kid Rock, the black man, hey. AKA hey. Cool Juice Man. Or Cool Juice Man. Break this shit down about the itis. That's like a hood thing. We eat, we get full, and you catch that itis. It knock your ass out and put you to sleep. Right now on the itis, we got this kale cooking in this bitch. So Keisha, tell us what's gonna be in this fucking kale. You're gonna see me put some garlic, some raisin, and apple, little nuts, but don't fret. I know it might sound like it doesn't go together, but it does. Trust me. Well. Tough, what's up, man? What, what, you don't like a mixture? What you don't like? You don't like when apples cook with onions and some shit? That shit is lovely, nigga. Like, well, what is your mm -hmm. issue? You know? Can't mix fruit and veggies and heat. Nigga, eat uh, apple pie, but don't want it in his well, head. I, I, you know what? I want to know why Tough got that pencil in his head. What he going to do? Rake, rake the food in a minute? <laughs> well, you know, as you know, Tough is a regular here. At the, the itis, this motherfucker done made it his restaurant too. This is my shit. My wife cooking this motherfucker done bogart it and made this shit his shit. Right. But yo, let's go into this footage of him eating this fucking Armageddon burger. How the fuck did you eat that big motherfucking Pretty burger? Dick. I didn't think I could do it. Yeah. But I did. And once I ate it, my hunger was done for two or three days. <laughs> <laughs> One second. Secret ingredient. Okay, secret ingredient here. What is it? It's coon juice. That's what this shit is. My glass is empty. This guy waiting for a drink. Goddamn right, I'm your resident drunk. All right, Black, this is a hot topic. Now let's talk about what everybody like to talk about. I hope this be the last time. I'm so sick of hearing this motherfucking name, Donald Trump. A salmon face? Salmon face. No, I'm you so know what, I'm, a, I'm a little bit reserved in my political views as, no, of, as of late. No, you not. I saw a picture with him. Ted Nugent and Kid Rock. What the hell is going on? Can you post Can you post that picture? Oh, yeah, yeah. We got it right here. It's right there. As soon as I see it, the shit pop up. Yeah, yeah. I got the Wizard of Oz in this motherfucker working with me. Yeah, yeah. Bobby, man, I just can't believe, man. He in the hood with us, man. Kicking it hard with us. But you know what? Rock has, he always kicking with presidents. I saw pictures with him in Butch. That's a big, that's, that's a big deal. Can I ask you a question, though? Yeah. You said Bush. Yeah, he was with Bush. Was he with Obama? Did you see that picture? Oh, uh, I ain't seen him with Obama yet. Shout out to Kid Rock. You know, he pulled this shit off. You know what I'm saying? What else going on, Tough? What's going on in your world? Hey, you see, you see what they did to your boy LeBron crib in LA? Oh, man. What they spray paint? Nigger, 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 nigger. Yes, sir, there? all over his gate. Giant white letters. Why they do that? I don't know, man. You know, hey. I mean, it's a bunch hey. of niggas playing in the NBA. Hey. I mean, they're going to do all the rest of the other teams soon? No, I don't like him too much, but you know, I. Brian! <laughs> she hate when I call that nigga Brian Brian. She say I sound gay or something, like I'm jocking a man or some shit. That nigga's good. Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with Top Dog? What else you want to talk in this fucking thing? Got on the grill right this now. This is a chicken grill chicken, you know what I'm saying? With love. I can't tell you. It's just, I mean, you saw me sprinkle this and sprinkle that, then I put the onions on there, and then I sprinkle some more. 
That look excellent, Keisha. I, I wish I ate chicken. Right. Black doesn't eat chicken, y'all, but that's okay. I got something for him. Black, I know you got a hot article for the day. Have you been online? What you what else you see? Hey, hey, check this. They got Steve, uh, a character in the, in the White Boy Rick movie. The funny thing about the White Boy Rick movie is a Detroit-based movie where they shooting the shit in Cleveland. <laughs> well, you know what? The movie is scheduled to be released uh, January 2018. Okay. And, and, and a friend of ours, uh, he would be uh, portrayed in the movie, Steve Roussel. Yeah. He was uh, White Boy Rick's right-hand man. For those of you who don't know, White Boy Rick was a drug dealer that really was an informant. He had the bug and really wanted to sell drugs, and I think the fans was like, you know what, fuck that, and locked his ass up. That's what I got from it. But what I also get from it is it's like he wasn't really in the game like the Curry Boys or the Chambers or the Young Boys Incorporated or Fairport's well, Finest, the best friends. Well, he wasn't putting in that work like that uh, he, to be getting a movie that's made about him. He's, yeah, he yeah, had but, 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 but he, 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 was, he was a Detroit folk hero. Uh -huh. I mean, mm -hmm. to, to a degree. You know, Steve Roussel used to pull up on us and pay me and Eshaim to rap for him. And then I remember his Uncle Hammer pulled guns on us in Seafood Bay and made us rap for him for hours and, and that's shit. a true story. I remember that, hearing that. Hey, but you know what? I got a white boy Rick story. Uh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't tell that. Tell it. We don't know either. Well, you know, uh, Steve Roussel, our friend, uh -huh. who was white boy Rick's right-hand man. Mm -hmm. uh, one time, our best friends was coming to kill Steve mm -hmm. at a club. Wow. We got down there. Me, white boy Rick, Kim Bates in Jamaica got down to the club to save Steve. Uh-huh. Feds pulled up, and this tripped me out. Because they told Rick, what the fuck you doing down here? Get out of here now. <laughs> and that was, the, that was the first time I see, you know, uh, that, yeah, for real. I mean, I, why would I lie about this? That was the first time I seen that, that this guy was uh, in the streets that heavy, you know what I mean? That's a whole that was a weird story. situation because yeah. we were cool with the best friends and we was keep cool with Steve Roussel and they was trying to kill each other, man. And even yeah. your green cheese got shot up by the best friends and that was our dog. That was one yeah. of our crew members yeah. of the yeah. Beast crew. You say green cheese? Yeah. But after they shot him up, they started well, calling well, him Swiss cheese well, and shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Detroit was a rough place in the 80s. You know, white boy Rick, from oh, my oh, understanding oh. of the story. Oh, fuck off. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> mm hmm Lord, have mercy. Yo, is it time yet? I think our guest is about to roll up in this bitch. From the New York City, the legendary, the black Elvis of this shit, the ultramatic MC himself. My man just walking through the door. Who keep up in this bitch? What's up, nigga? What's up, man? How you doing, dude? You got, Welcome to the ice, You got all that, you got the money in the table? Yeah, my wife custom made this table with like about 5,000 pennies. She glued every one of them with some yeah, gorilla glue and this shit. Really different. Yeah. We did it herself and shit. Very unique. Yeah, man. Same. We wanted to get quarters, but motherfuckers would have been breaking in the house and shit. That's funny, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what type of food you want to eat Fuck right now, man? What you want to eat right now? Uh, whatever's good. Is that a real pancake right there? I can check yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that's a real one. Yeah, yeah. cause you know, shows sometimes, you never know. You, you oh, think yeah. it's, 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 so, it's so, much, real on, it's so much on TV, you might think it's fake or something. You know, like, <laughs> you know, you know what I want to always ask you? I know you dropped the 3000 truck yesterday. I know with the Black Elvis, you was the first one to rock the wig and shit. What's your take on Andre 3000? Is it all love or is it like, uh, wait a minute here? I like Andre, you know, I mean, Outkast was a very amazing group to me, you know, I mean, a lot of the formula came from the Black Elvis album, I can say for sure, you know, okay. a lot of the formula, but... Have Andre acknowledged that? Uh, I don't know, some people are different, some people, you know, can uh, acknowledge something, uh, be real with it, and some people can't, you know, sometimes... You know, like you said, I guess it's, I take it as flattery, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I, I was always creating trends anyway. Different groups around the world, all over that was influenced by me. Then, you know, the alter ego thing. and oh, yeah. the Octagon, Cool Keith, Black Elvis. Yeah, Black Elvis. Talk to me about that real quick. 
that's what I had created when I was with Ultra, you know, the, that was my way and my outlet to um, evolve in my music to do other groups and, you know, separate all those characters and make albums and get more money. Yeah. What do you listen to? I'm, I'm very anxious to hear. What, what do Cool Keith be banging? Oh, I listen to all kinds of shit. You know, I bump all the rappers from everywhere. I bump everything out. Mm -hmm. I bump all uh, DMX. Mm -hmm. I might bump the, the South shit. You know, okay. I listen to, you know, Future. I listen to just all the tracks that they do. I listen to Drake. You know, I listen to... Um, Niggas hate on Drake. I think Drake is great. I like Drake. Drake yeah. is, a, Drake is a, a, a great artist right now. I like Drake a lot, you know. I think I'm the new Drake, though. You think you're the new Drake? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's your take on one of Michigan's great Eminem? I like Eminem. You know, I think, uh -huh. you, know, you know, he brings a lot to... Innovativeness, writing, you know, skills of uh, lyrical, you know, delivery and stuff, you know. Yeah, so. he started his career with me. A lot of people don't know before Dr. Dre had him, Eminem was on Straight Jacket Records, my oh, label, yeah? for like little. six years. Mm. So he got his hard knocks of schooling on everything as far as, you know, his first studio session. I took him down to Prince Studio with me in 1992 at Paisley Park. Oh, that yeah. was his first real recording session. So it was cool to hear the intro last night when, you know, he bitch Slim Shady dropped your name. Yeah, me and him got to do a record one day, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it'll be hot. It'll definitely be hot. I think that yeah, should be you hot. Know, I just think, you know, right now it's a lot of, you know, with a lot of artists working together, it's a lot of management between stuff that don't make no sense. It makes like, no sense. A lot of these people are in between the real artists that need to connect together and do some songs and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you're an OG. you 30 years deep in this shit. You know what I'm saying? What's going on with the state of music right now? Hip-hop music, period. Where is that now? It's a lot of I mean, niggas I, wearing purses and shit Oh, yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we went from... Niggas getting we, went, we went from pants to pantyhose. Uh-huh. Like you said, um, having pants. your pockets to pocketbooks. You know, uh -huh. so, you know I, don't, I don't hate them, but, you know, the music got to get a little more uh, content to it. You know, uh -huh. they don't have no substance no more. It's like like microwave music. It goes away real quick. Press the button five minutes. You know. Yeah. Take the plastic off. Yeah. That's yeah. Their, that's mm -hmm. their shit right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, you got some new lyrical guys too. So, and then you got some new dudes that's whack. Super whack. Super whack is. Uh, yeah. So and we got that too. So we, I think we're gonna have some whack around. Always. To make somebody feel good. Always. You know? Yeah. You know yeah. I'm looking at a lot of these dudes too. They make a lot of money. How you make a lot of money and you're still gangster? You see a lot of these dudes too sometimes, you know, when you're born in the flight, they standing at the um, gate and stuff, they still hard. I'm like, you didn't went through security, dog. <laughs> and it took, you can't bring no guns through nothing. You in this, you still in United Airlines and, 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 and you know, you still riding Delta with, a, you know, smirks on your face and all that. I'm like, you know, you, you need to leave that shit at home somewhere. I say some of the dudes need to be a little more respectful. I think Very some of them so. are disrespectful. You know, smacking the shit out of some you know, of these you, know, you got a lot of artists now. You know, they'll walk in a room and at least, you know, acknowledge who, you know, the help, uh, acknowledge yeah. who helped you get where you at. You know what I'm saying? Acknowledge right. who made the doors open for you. And, you know, I never look for the, you know, honor me. I don't care about it because I'm always going to shoot my own horn. But, no, yeah. A first impression on when you meet somebody, that determines the connection of a person sometimes. The oh, first, yeah. The first me of a person. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, your first introduction is the... Man. You can see through a motherfucker from that far. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, you can. I remember a story one time. I think I was up at Columbia, and um, Faith Newman was the A&R. Mm -hmm. And she wanted us to, you know, she begging me to go meet Nas, right? She, okay. She begged me to go meet Nas. She begging me, uh, Nas is in another room, you know. So we go meet him, right? So he's sitting there. I don't know, maybe he smoked a pound of weed or something, but he's still, I don't expect no motherfucker to jump up out the ceiling when they see right. me. But at least knowledge, like, oh, how you doing? What's on? But I'm saying just the general, general respect. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to bother the, the right. man at all, but when I got over there and met him, he was like, uh... He was standing like, like, oh, yeah, what's this? Uh, yeah, what's up? 
Yeah, but he had like an attitude more like, who the fuck is these motherfuckers coming in my room, man? Yeah. Damn, like, man. So I'm looking at this motherfucker's personality like, Damn, man. this is this is nice. That's cabal. But I didn't get mad about it. I just he's just young, probably. <laughs> How does it feel, man? 30 years over, still come to Detroit, San Andrews, pack a house. I mean, because you kept it real to yourself, true to yourself. How does it feel to still be able to do that? Because there's only a handful of motherfuckers can do it. So. Uh, I feel good. I mean, my style never changed and never got old. You don't hit me up there. And when I hit but I don't do that. You know, right. you know, I still write my own shit. Uh -huh. I ain't got nobody writing for me, you know. You know, we take care of ourselves a lot, you know. Now, yeah, you looking good, man. A lot of you, you, motherfuckers, a lot of you motherfuckers is, you know, older, you know, younger than us. They look old as fuck. Old as fuck. Arrogant at the same time. Young, arrogant, and look fucked up. Young, you know arrogant, look fucked up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> hey, man, we want to thank you for, very much for coming. Actually, you're the first guest on the Itis, yes. you know, yeah, that meant a lot to me yeah, to start I, this shit off the right way with a true legend of this hip hop shit, you know. Thanks mm -hmm. for the knowledge you kicked. I'm glad you stopped by, man. I'm honored, actually. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, everything I said, you know, like I said, everybody, you know, I don't want, I want everybody to take everything personal, but like uh -huh. I said, I talk the truth about how I feel, you know what I'm saying? So, how did you like your food? That was great. I loved it. <laughs> the steak was soft. Uh huh. I hope I don't get the itis, but I got it. <laughs> you don't get it, motherfucker. Yeah, you don't get it. Yeah. But you gonna be on the plane, so it's cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. We gotta do this again one day. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely, you gotta get a remix, you know, like a remix like, you know, on this bitch. I like to have the truth out there, you know what I'm saying? Yes, it's right. all about the truth, so. All right, cool all right, Keith. Yeah, definitely. My man, definitely. cool Keith. Was in this bitch, huh? East Side of Detroit style. East Side of Detroit, that's how it is, man. Oh, I love God. coming through. Yo, that fool was off the hook again, as usual. I know how you do, I know how you do. You know, we like to give a special thanks to my man, Fairport Tough, the black man, and none other than the one and only Dr. Octagon, Cool Keith, for stopping by. Tune in next time, because you never know who gonna be up in this bitch. I'm Champ Town, this is Keisha, the itis. Peace out. I think we better take a nap now. You think so? Yeah. yeah.